Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys briefly how to just enhance and enlarge a photo uh, for an enlargement print. So this is a question I get asked quite often, and it's something that's quite quick and easy to do. So we're just going to show you guys how to do it right in Photoshop. Um, later on, I'll come up with a tutorial for you guys in Lightroom, but uh, I think everybody's got Photoshop or at least Photoshop Elements, which should operate pretty much the same way. So we'll do it in here first. All right, so load up this image, and if you guys don't have this image, you can either load up one of your own or you can download this image from the article itself to uh, load it up. This image was taken by Linengers of Photography. It was taken out in uh, Utah actually about three years ago during Ragnar, uh, which is a kind of an annual marathon that gets held out there. So we thank them for providing it to us. So we're going to do this. We're going to load it up and then we're going to go to Image and Image Size, which you can hit Alt Control I to get to. Alright, now once the image size dialog box pops up, it's going to give you a little bit of information. So starting with the pixel dimensions, and it tells you overall megapixels right here. It's 6.18. Okay, so in width it's 1800 pixels wide, and in height it's 1200 pixels wide. And how that's determined is they just take the document width, which is 6 inches, and they multiply that by the resolution, which is 300 pixels per inch. So 6 times, eight, uh, six times 300 is 1800, and 4 times 300 is 1200 for the height. Um, now, if we want to enlarge this, all we got to do is enter in the dimensions of the enlargement. So let's say we want to do an 8 by 12 image. So if we take this right now to an 8 by 12, it's actually going to be printing at a resolution of half of what it's at right now, at 150 pixels per inch. Now, most printers print at 240 to 300 pixels per inch. So if you try to print this at an 8 by 12, it's going to look blurry, unsharp, or it may not just even come out that size. So, and that's, you know, if you guys have tried printing things from email before, like images that have been prepped for, for web use and for uh, computer use, those are prepared for screen resolution, which is at 72 pixels per inch, which is even lower. So if you're trying to print those, you know, you get even a greater pixelated effect because they're just not printable images. Their, their resolution is not high enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter in the height. Uh, and we're going to start with the shortest edge first. The reason why is because we have these options here selected, Constrained Proportions, which is going to automatically resize the image to keep the same proportion of the original image. So if I enter in here 8, well, it automatically puts in 12 for the width. Now, there's a small caveat here. If you guys are printing, like, say, um, you guys want to do a 14 by 14 square file, um, so you're going to do a square crop when it goes to the lab. Well, the reason why we say to enter in the short, the short side first is because um, if you don't, it's gonna, it's not gonna resize appropriately. For example, if if I want it to be 14 by 14, and I put 14 inches on the long side, which is on the width side, then my height is only gonna be 9.33 inches, which isn't big enough because I want to crop this down so that both sides are 14 inches long. So basically, what I have to do is I have to make the short side 14 inches, and it'll resize the long side to 21 inches, and then we have to cut off 7 inches off the 21 inch side to get to our 14 by 14. Okay. But let's go back and we're going to do just our standard 8 by 12. I want it to be 300 pixels per inch. You can go as low as 240, but I would keep it at 300 because um, a lot of printers can actually utilize that resolution. We're going to keep scale styles and constrained proportions selected so it's automatically kind of um, keeping it the same size as our, our previous image. And then we're going to have resample image selected also. Now, resampling the image gives us a few different options. Um, starting with nearest neighbor, bilinear, bicubic, bicubic smoother, and bicubic sharper. And what these are, it actually tells you right here exactly what is used for what. So you have um, bicubic smoother is the one that's best for enlargements, and that's what we're doing. We're not doing a reduction, we're not doing it. I mean, smooth gradients is great, but we want the best thing for enlargements. So we're going to select the bicubic smoother. And what Photoshop is going to do is it's basically going to enlarge the image, and because there's not, uh, the original image is much smaller than the intended image, it's going to basically extrapolate the additional pixels that are needed to enhance the size. And Photoshop does a great job of this. So we're going to hit OK. OK, now it's in, it's enlarged my image. Now the next thing I need to do is to actually enhance and sharpen the image so that it comes out nice and sharp on an 8x12, because originally this was prepared for a 4x6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys go down to the bottom left of the screen. In this preview window, it shows us the size that we're previewing right now. Now, I can zoom out to be able to see the entire image, which shows me I'm at 23% right now. But what I want to do is I want to see a pixel-to-pixel -pixel preview. So I'm going to enter in 100%. Now, this is not showing the actual uh, print size of the image 
because if it were, this would actually be a huge image. It's actually just showing a pixel-to-pixel -pixel preview of the image. Okay, but this view is great because it allows us to see the sharpening up and uh, close on a pixel-to-pixel -pixel preview so that we can kind of decide exactly what we like. So now we're going to go to the sharpen. I'm going to go to filter, sharpen, and we're going to choose the unsharp mask. And you guys may be wondering, like, okay, we're choosing sharpen, and every option in here says sharpen, 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 except for one says unsharp. Why is it unsharp? Well, the unsharp mask is actually named after um, after basically what was done on film to create this effect. Basically, on, on film, uh, how we used to sharpen images, if you guys have used film before, you'll know this. If you guys haven't, well, what we used to do is basically take a digital negative, and we'd reverse that negative into a positive and make it blurry. So we'd unsharpen the negative into a blurry positive. And then you layer that blurry positive back over the negative so it becomes a mask. Um, and then what happens is the blurry areas on that positive cancel out and the other areas act to create kind of an enhanced sharpened version of the original image. So you're essentially unsharpening it, creating a positive, and then masking it back over. So it's called an unsharp mask. That's a little bit of history for you guys. So you guys can actually know why it's called that. But don't you know, don't be fooled. It is actually what I like. It's the best, you know, I think it's the best tool in, in Photoshop to in sharpen images. So I use it the most often. Now, in this little preview dialog box, it'll actually show you the image and you can click wherever you want to see if you want to quickly go to a specific area. But because on the left side, we already have a pixel to pixel preview here, um, we can see the entire thing in our window. As long as I have the checkbox checked, we'll see the changes that we're making right in the main window. So the, the little preview right here isn't as useful. Okay, so let's go over these options. Amount is really simple to understand. Um, amount is basically strictly the the strength of the effect that we're applying based on these other options. Um, radius is talking about how far out from each edge in pixels do you want the effect to go. So if it's two pixels, it's going to go two pixels out from each edge. Essentially what this means is the higher the radius, well the lower the radius, the finer the sharpening detail is going to be, and the larger the radius, the more uh, large and crazy the, that sharpening effect is going to be. Uh, so the larger the detail will, will be basically. And then on the threshold side, threshold is a little bit complicated to understand. Essentially what this is saying is basically as I increase the threshold, it's looking for areas that have higher contrast to sharpen. So if I increase threshold, it's not going to sharpen the areas that don't have as much contrast. So for the most part, you can leave it at zero. I'll show you guys what it does exactly so you guys can kind of play with it on your own. We're going to start with here with just popping in a number into the amount because if we don't have at least like you know 25 to 75 percent in the amount we're not going to see anything that we're doing below so from there I'm going to actually start to increase the radius pipe pixels and what we want to avoid here is we're going to do and this is you guys will notice that this is all done by eye um, some people will have certain preferences they want things to be sharper than others so this is kind of a matter of preference what you do want to avoid is harsh sharpening lines which are created when you increase radius too high. So already I've gone too high. You can see those black edges that are being added around everything. Okay, if I take it too high, even higher than that, you can see how much the image is changing every every time I, I increase this step. And it basically we have, if I take it up to 250 pixels, we have something that looks completely 100% different than our original image, which is this. Okay, so typically you don't want to go too high. And, and I, I think for this image, around three pixels is about what I want. About th Above three I start seeing the black lines start to appear around his head and I want to avoid that. Then from here I'm going to adjust the amount. Now the amount uh, of the effect is just, again, it's an, uh, talking about the strength. So I think right around 80 percent is about where I want it. If I go too high, again that sharpening effect, look how crazy that is. Okay. Um, if I go too low it becomes way too soft and there's really not an effect at all. So I'm going to go right around 80 percent. And now, like we talked about earlier, the threshold is going to basically say, okay, the higher you raise your threshold, it's going to look for areas of higher contrast to effect first. So as I take this up, you can see that basically the areas like around here where in the, in the grass and in, in the uh, flowers and stuff where there's not as much contrast, um, the sharpening effect is much, much lighter. Areas where there's more contrast, like along his white shirt against this white back, or against this darker background, has a much higher contrast level, so it's actually sharpening that area more. Um, I kind of like to leave this just at zero. I kind of want the entire image to be affected the same. So I'm going to hit OK. 
And there we've done it, guys. I'm going to zoom out, and now we have en enhanced and enlarged our image. So now, one other thing I wanted to mention was that we talked about earlier, if you're printing for crop resolutions, like if we want to do a 14 by 14, well, I would enter in that short edge under, under the height, so it'd be 14 inches. I'm going to go back here just to sh illustrate. Um, this automatically becomes 21 inches. Now, depending on what lab you're using, a lot of times, uh, obviously I don't need those extra 7 inches. I can either crop them off right in Photoshop, or I can just send it to the lab, and a lot of labs, like when you're submitting online, they'll actually have you adjust the crop right there. So don't worry too much about that. Um, like, you know, if, you're, if one side is longer than the other, get the short side correct, and then you can either crop in Photoshop right afterwards, or you can crop it on, like on their, through the lab's software right afterwards when you're uploading. All right, guys, so all we got to do now is save out the image, and we're going to do that just by hitting Control-S. If it brings up the dialog box asking you save options, save at the maximum quality level. And we are done. Hope you guys enjoyed it.